Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to calculate the pH of a weak diprotic acid solution. In the previous video, um, I discussed polyprotic acids in general. And I said that, generally speaking, you treat the first step As if it were the only step and there was one exception to the rule which was dilute sulfuric acid and I worked an example of that in in the previous video except when you're working with dilute sulfuric acid solutions so generally speaking, just treat polyprotic acids um, as if they were any other weak acid. So carbonic acid here in this example um, is a weak acid and we have a 0.125 molar solution. You could look up the Ka values for the two protons. The first one being 4.3 times 10 to the negative seventh and the second one being much smaller 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th. So since this is such a tiny ionization constant here, then we do not have to worry about the second ionization step contributing a significant amount of hydronium ions enough to affect the pH. So that's why we can ignore it. Whereas in the previous video, sulfuric acid's second ionization step actually has a pretty large um, equilibrium constant, ionization constant. So that's the reason why that's an exception to the rule. But for carbonic acid, we just have to focus on the first step. So let's go ahead. It's weak acid, so we will need a rice table. We're in an aqueous solution, equilibria. Now carbonic acid is donating a proton to water and therefore is losing one proton. So we write the conjugate base. Remember, we're only losing one proton. It's what we're going to base our pH from. And then the conjugate acid of water, once it's gained a proton, is the hydronium ion. Now, initially in our beaker, we have 0.125 molar carbonic acid and zero amount of the <clears throat> bicarbonate and the hydronium ions are negligible. And then changing, this one changes by minus one X and then plus one X. Remember, you're always looking at the stoichiometry just in case. Plus one X, everything's one to one to one in this case though. And the equilibrium, you add up the initial and the change. So this is 0.125 minus one X. So I'll just say minus X. 0 plus 1x is x, 0 plus 1x is x. All right, so the question is asking us to find the pH. And so when we find the, we need to find the pH, we look for the hydronium ions at equilibrium. And so in this case, we need to solve for x. So Ka1 is equal to products over reactants. In the last video, I taught you some tricks to be able to quickly identify if X is small enough to ignore. And basically the initial concentration needs to be 10 to the second to 10 to the third times greater than the Ka. And in this case, it definitely is. It's like 2.9 times 10 to the fifth times greater. So X is small enough to ignore. So we don't have to waste any time doing the quadratic. If you were to solve for x, it's equal to 2.3184 times 10 to the 
times 10 to the negative fourth. Now you can always double check to make sure that it's less than 5%. So you divide by the initial concentration. And then X is 0.18% of the initial concentration. So it's definitely small enough to ignore. So therefore the hydronium ions at equilibrium is 2.32 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. And therefore pH is 3.63. You ask yourself, what's in my beaker? Well, it's a weak acid. We definitely expect the pH to be less than seven. So having a pH of 3.63 seems reasonable enough. All right, so when it comes, once again, when it comes to polyprotic acids, generally treat the first step as if it were the only step. Unless you have a dilute sulfuric acid solution, which check out my previous video, I go over an example of that one. But in this case here for carbonic acid, we just focus on the first, I, first proton that's being ionized to figure out the hydronium ion concentrations in solution um, and therefore was able to help figure out the pH. We knew that that would be sufficient enough because if we look at the second ionization step, it's significantly small. So, with reason, there's not going to be enough of that second proton being donated um, that would affect the pH greatly. You could always do the second rice table to prove that to yourself. Um, and if you did do a second rice table, make sure you put in the initial concentrations of the bicarbonate and the acid in the first step, and then see how everything changes by equilibrium but you'll get an answer very close to what we, what we received here once we've done our calculations, just based on the first ionization step only. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.